Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno and welcome to episode 98 of Game Programming. Okay, it's crazy how long it's been since the last episode, but uh, you know, university's kind of getting the better of me. Um, but university is almost over, so you guys should see a lot more videos coming up shortly as I go on to my summer holidays. In fact, um, I should be able to release an episode of Game Programming every few days or so now instead of every few weeks. So definitely uh, look forward to that. So today we're going to start on a on quite a long series of videos um, in which we're going to basically implement the A star search algorithm. Now, the A star search algorithm is a pathfinding algorithm that essentially um, helps, uh, I guess, well, enables you to get from point A to point B in the shortest path possible. Of course, going around things like obstacles and, and again, taking the lowest cost path, path. So meaning if you have stuff like mud, which slows you down, um, it might try and work around that. So it's very intelligent and it's very good and we're going to implement it um, eventually. Okay, but there's a lot of steps that need to be taken before we can implement it. So right now, what we've got going on is this game, of course, called Rain. We've got all these uh, just random ambient King Cherno uh, AIs. And then we've got this Red Evil one which, ta which chases you. Now, now the player moves insanely fast right now so we can run out of his range and you can see he stops chasing us. So that, that stuff is working great. But the problem that we really want to solve right now is uh, basically if we want to get our AI to move from point A, which is right here, to point B, which is where my mouse cursor is, um, he's just not going to be able to do that, right? He's just going to try and go like this, and then he'll actually, like the wall will stop him from getting there, okay? So we need to somehow um, get him to be able to create a path around this obstacle, right? So that he can go like this and be like, I made it. All right, that, that, that's our goal, essentially. So to achieve this, we'll be using the A-star search algorithm. Now, there are a lot of algorithms that will do this, but A-star is one of the most efficient and popular ones, so we'll be doing that one. Now, that's all good, but um, to, in order to actually implement um, the A-star search algorithm, we have a lot of things that we need to actually prepare for that, okay? And also, it is, it's quite a complicated algorithm, um, especially if you've never done pathfinding before. So um, that's why I'm going to be making sure to explain all of it in as much detail as possible. All right. So first off, what we need to do is make a vector class. And that's what this video is going to be about. Um, vectors. Now, we haven't, we've kind of been avoiding using vectors so far in this game. And really, by avoiding using vectors, I don't mean we have been using them technically, we just haven't been actually making a class for them and stuff like that. And that's really quite a popular thing to do. Um, and the reason is I didn't want to really complicate this. But um, now we actually pretty much have to make a class for it. So right at, right now, I'm just, I'm actually just going to make another folder here. So under Rain, I'm going to hit New, right-click, New, whoops, look out of that. Right-click, New, Folder, and I'll call that, um, I'll call that Util, okay? It stands for Utilities. This is just going to be like kind of like tool classes, right? So like tools so that we can, um, so that we can, uh, well, I guess helper, helper classes that will help us with stuff like maths. So we'll call this one Vector2i, okay? And I'll explain what the hell 2 and i means in a minute. So if we hit finish on that, we've got a class. So what on earth is this 2 and i thing, okay? So first of all, we have Vector. Right, this is just like a little convention, like a little naming convention. We have vector, we have, which obviously means that this class is a vector, okay, or, or this class will contain a vector. We have two, which means that this vector will have two coordinates, as in the coordinate system is based on two points, which means it's two dimensional essentially. If it was three, it would have three. So x, y, z, two means x and y. And i, of course, is the type of data that is stored in this vector, i standing for integer. If we were using doubles, we'd hit D. If we were using floats, we'd hit F. So uh, floats are pretty popular as well. We, we absolutely don't need them because we're not using anything like OpenGL or anything. So vector 2i, okay? So let's actually, how do we create a vector, right? So the way that we create a vector is by creating a new instance of this vector class. So we need, we need a constructor that will actually allow us to construct this vector. So let's hit up public vector 2i like we would make any other constructor. And in the parameter, I'm just going to hit up int x and int y, okay? So what this, what, what this lets us do is actually create a new vector 2i with two parameters, x and y. 
Now, x and y, of course, will refer to um, what this vector actually is, all right? So, to in, in order to actually, I guess, you know, apply these, we have to, of course, make variables, two variables in our class, private int x and y. Now, you know, this is pretty standard procedure, so I'm not going to spend too long on this, but in order to, of course, set the x that we specify in the parameter to the one that's set to this class, we simply hit up this.x, which refers to x. And the reason we have to use the this keyword, obviously, is because these have the same name, so we need to tell Java which one we're referring to. And this dot y equals y, right? And that's pretty much it, right? That's our basic vector class. You could make this public and, and do stuff like that, but I'm rather than doing that, I'm actually just gonna make getters and setters. Just because. In fact, I'm I'm thinking right now if I should, and that there's a lot of debate as to which as to whether you should or not. Because see, this is the other thing I want to quickly mention. If we were to make something like public int get x, okay, and what that would do is return x, and then we were to make something like public int uh, get, oh, sorry, set x, right? And it doesn't need to be an int. Public void set x, int x, and of course set this.x equal to x. Would that really be, you know, necessary? As in, because we've set both of them, so why not just make this public, and then we'd be able to, um, you know, modify it, basically, without having to call these methods. That's an idea, and that's really up to you, but... We're gonna do it this way because I'm gonna show you guys a little trick as well. So we'll keep this private and with these things, right, the usage might be a bit, you'll, you'll see this in a minute actually. Let me first type these out. So public int get x will of course return the x component of the vector. Public int get y will return the y component of the vector. Public void set x will set the x and of course public void set y will set the y. All right, pretty simple stuff. Now. Right now, these kind of return void, and that's cool, I guess, but in practical usage, it might not be very, I guess, I don't know, fun, okay? Let's just consider a quick scenario here. So public, um, let's call it public void test, right? And th this is just like, I'll delete this in a minute. This is just here so I can demonstrate the usage. So let's just say we wanna make a new vector, all right? We'll call this like player position or something, right? So, in fact, let's just call it position and not complicate things. Vector 2i position equals new vector 2i and then we'll make the position, let's just say, 80, 40, okay? So it's almost like a tile coordinate. In fact, this is this probably would be a tile coordinate, right? We've made a new position. Now, let's just say, oh, suddenly we want to set the position to, oh, I don't know, let's just say... Um, well, let's just say we want to set the x to be like 15 suddenly instead of 80. Um, but that's kind of boring, right? What we could also do, okay, is let's just say we want to do something like, um, again, this is kind of useless for this scenario, but just bear with me. If we wanted to do something like vector2i.setx like straight away, then what we could do is set the return type of set x instead of being void to be vector 2i, right? And then at the end, simply return this. Now, this allows us to use the method as a simple set x if we require it to, yeah? And that'll be fine, obviously. Or it actually allows us to modify it here. Now, why is that useful? Well, in this case, it's not extremely useful because we can set it in the parameter. But in some cases, it, uh, it can be useful. And I'll demonstrate that in a minute here because we haven't finished with our vector class yet. Return thus. Return this. All right, cool. So now that we've made a, I guess, a really basic way of creating a new vector, let's go ahead and make another way of creating a vector. So vector 2i, and this time we won't use any parameters. So what this will do is set this.x equal to zero and this.y equal to zero. Okay, so what this is doing is it's creating a new vector but with a location of zero, zero, all right? And then we have this little thing now where it's like, okay, we're setting both of these twice, kind of repetition, kind of, not really. Um, so let, let, why not make a public void set, which sets int x and int y. So this.x equals x, this.y equals y. And then instead of having to do this, we can simply go ahead and set x, y. 
and set x, y. Whoops, set zero, zero is what I meant, of course. <laughs> All right, cool. So, well, so basically, I guess this is almost a tutorial on how to make a good utility class, right? This can, this can pretty much handle anything without it now. Um, but not quite. Okay, so there's one more way that I want to explore as to how we want to maybe ve maybe make a vector, okay? And that is off an existing vector. So let's just say we've got a vector and we want to make another vector that is based on this vector, all right? So public vector 2i, and it'll take a vector 2i as the parameter, all right? And we'll simply set vector.x, vector.y, okay? So what, what we've done here is we've made an existing vector. So you can see that if we've got position and we want to maybe, let's just say we want to set, if this if this were to be the player position, and it, excuse the use of underscores, it's just because it makes it a bit easier to see here since it's a long word. Um, so we've got mob.position, we've got player.position, we want to set the mob's position to be the player position, but on the other hand, we do want it to be its own vector, okay? Because clearly these two should not have the same instance, otherwise the player will always be at the location of the mob and vice versa. So we'll make a new vector to i, but we'll simply feed off the player position. All right, cool. So what we've done now is we've created a brand new vector which contains the mob position, but we've created it based off the player position, but it is its own vector. So when the mob moves, <clears throat> the player position won't be affected at all. Now, the, here's where the vector return type comes in very useful. If we want to be like, yeah, okay, we want to make, we want to make this at the player's position, but maybe I want to change the X. So I want to make it based off the player's Y, but let's just change the X. We can go ahead and go set X 50, all right? Just like that. And that, that'll be fine, obviously. So that's, that's a cool thing that you could do as well. Now, of course, you could always do it like this, but and that's pretty boring, let's be honest. And also, doing it this way allows us to be one lineup card rather than having this, which is the same effect in the end, but requires two lines of code. So that is pretty much going to wrap up this vector class, almost. Now we're going to get into the more juicy stuff about vectors, and that is stuff like addition, subtraction, dot product, cross product, all that good stuff. We're not going to deal with dot cross product yet. I don't think we'll even need them anytime soon in this series, but I'll leave this here for now. But adding and subtracting vectors is, is incredibly easy, okay? So we've got add, let's just say we want to add a vector uh, to another vector, so uh, vector. We want to add a vector to this vector. All right. All we have to do is go this dot x plus equals vector dot x. All right. And this dot y plus equals vector dot y. Really simple stuff. And we'll do the exact same thing. And here is where we can also set the return type to vector two i. So, for example, I don't know what again why you'd want this, but you could have a scenario in which you uh have the player, have, you create a mob position and then you go ahead and go, okay, we're creating a mob position based on the player's position, but we'll double it. So we'll end up with something like that and that'll be fine. So, you know, infinite scenarios here really. And of course we need to return this. Um, and then subtract, I'm just gonna copy and paste this because subtract will be the same. So subtract, to subtract a vector, we of course change this to multiply, to Sorry, to minus. Now, dot and cross product are a bit different. Dot product, I don't think is much different, but cross product is very different. So we're not gonna deal with them today. I don't think we'll need them for a while anyway. But that's gonna pretty much wrap up this episode of game programming. I hope you guys learned something because um, we'll be using this stuff extensively in the A star search algorithm because um, rather than using tile position, see, this is the other thing I wanna quickly mention. Um, this vector class is gonna be the backbone for any kind of locationing in the future, okay? And the reason is it, it enables us to store two variables in one class, as well as gives us awesome, ac awesome access to functions such as these, okay? Now, that being said, um, and that being said, the reason we even need a vector class in our A-star search algorithm is if we go into level real quick, and I'll just open up the level.java class, you can see over here that when we um, get tiles, we're returning static objects. We're not, we're, we're not actually returning instances. Now, because our tiles are not separate instances, they're actually already defined as static instances. In other words, there is only one instance of a grass tile, 
it just gets rendered everywhere. It just gets red every time we render, you know, an array of grass tiles, right? The actual object, there's only one instance of it. Because of that, a tile does not have an X and Y, okay? I know there's an X and Y here. I don't think, did we actually use that? If I remove that, will it scream? No, exactly. Let's just remove that. A tile does not have an X and Y, okay? A tile is just a sprite and, you know, it contains whether it's solid or not. And it contains a method to actually render it to the screen. A sprite does not have an X and Y coordinate. Because it doesn't have that, we need something to keep track of where the, sprite, where, where the tile actually is. And we do have this wonderful get tile, which will actually check if a tile is at a, is at a coordinate and return it to us. But we still need a vector so that we can build a path, okay? So that's, um, that is the relation of vector 2i to our A star search algorithm. And hopefully, um, with the next episode of game programming, we'll be able to actually start uh, possibly talking about the actual algorithm. So yeah, but anyway, this vector class was very, very important. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Please hit the like button. The more likes this gets, the more likely I am to actually post another episode. And the reason is it just motivates me. Um, so feel free to hit the like button and leave a comment if you're having some trouble. If you are actually having some serious trouble and it requires more than like 10 words to describe, head over to thecherno.com. The link will be in the description. Um, and if you go to the forums section, you'll actually be able to post and definitely get a reply. All right. Guaranteed. Literally. There is not a single post there that has not had any replies. So, um, yeah. But other than that, guys, I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.